please join me in welcoming Juan. Thank you. It's really great to be here with you. Uh, this is an awesome venue, an awesome community, and uh, I'm just super honored to be standing on the stage today. Um, very happy to finally get the Filecoin community together. Uh, we launched the network in a, during a pandemic, and we couldn't get together for that moment. So it's really awesome to actually be here with you live celebrating. So thank you very much for being here. And I want to, before I kick off, I want to just give a huge, huge round of applause for all the organizers, for, to the Falcon Foundation, all the people involved in putting this together. This is an amazing event and series of events. So really, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much. Uh, great. So what I want to talk to you today about is that we need to grow Filecoin to safeguard our civilization. I want to cover three things. First off, why Filecoin matters. Second, I want to recognize tremendous progress and give you a sense of where things are going. And the third is that I want to leave you, each person, with a challenge. Let's dive into why Filecoin matters. I, I believe that we are living on an extremely, extremely critical century. No century has been like this ever before. By every measure that we can think of, by all kinds of aspects of our, of our life, by um, things like mortality, things like, um, li things like life expectancy, things like poverty, things like um, access to resources, things like ability to self-actualize and so on, by every measure, humanity is in a dramatically better position today than it's ever been before. There's just an amazing story of progress through the last few centuries, last few millennia. And, and so from that perspective, we are in a tremendously optimistic uh, position. Everything has been going extremely well. Of course, there's been all kinds of really deep challenges, all kinds of really bad things um, happening across our, across our history. But today, it's just by every measure of, hum of, human, of the human condition, our civilization is doing dramatically better than ever before. However, we're also faced with extremely difficult challenges. We have a serious phase transition happening at the moment. Um, in the last 80 years, computing has totally revolutionized our species, and it stands to change it dramatically more over the next 80 years. So when you sort of look back and think decade after decade, and you think of the improvements that got deployed and how those affected our species, um, and you think about how powerful you are today, what the capabilities that you have where you can walk around with one of these supercomputers and you're integrated into the like, humanity's nervous system and you're able to call anybody, you're able to broadcast your messages to the world, and you're able to real-time view what's going on around the planet. Um, just remember that you are a fundamentally more capable human than our ancestors. And that's happened in a very fast time scale. Now, what's ahead of us for the next few decades are changes of that magnitude and beyond. Um, this improvement rate is compounding, and there are many technologies that are going to arrive over the next few decades that stand to transform humanity beyond what, what's happened so far. So it's really critical that as we develop, develop and deploy these technologies, the, that the internet and the data and the computing that we use it res respects human rights, that we establish some notion of digital human rights so that we can aim for really good outcomes and prevent these technologies from being used for bad. Uh, and second, we really have to get ahead of some extremely critical challenges when it comes to things like brain-computer interfaces and AGI and so on to make sure that we have a safe transition towards a, a good future. So this is, just to be clear, no group of humans has ever encountered a civilizational scale problem like this. And so it's really up to us to make sure that things go well. Uh, to make matters a bit more complicated, there's other kinds of X risks that we also have to deal with. So things like, you know, remember that you know, we live in a world where nuclear weapons are pointed to <laughs> every city at every moment, which is kind of weird. Um, we have biotech problems, and we have a serious climate, climate problem. And to make matters a bit more troublesome, uh, our large-scale macro systems 
are inadequate to solve these kinds of problems. They were built, they were started and built through the accretion of improvements to government systems with a huge set of upgrades around the 1700s. And for the most part, while we've made improvements, the, the bulk of our civilization rests upon the foundations of that era. And so a lot of our macro systems are based on systems that worked really well in the 1700s, but don't quite work well today, and certainly haven't convolved with the, the advances in telecommunications, computing, and so on. Um, today, you can coordinate humans at massive scales in real-time action. You can figure out what the right solutions to problems are way faster than you can discuss them in governments. And it's one of these problems where, were we not dealing with other kinds of things, I would sort of predict that we're headed for a massive government correction moment where we'll upgrade our government systems by leaning into the technologies that we've built over the last um, 80 years. However, the, the reason this is a problem right now is that these systems, while they remain unupgraded, um, are also steering and stewarding our decision making at a global scale against these kinds of problems. And they've just sort of proved to be quite inadequate. We're, we're making significant improvements, but they're kind of too slow to react. So what are we to do about this? So given that, for the most part, these macro systems are responsible for the great benefit that we've enjoyed for the last few centuries, but the fact that they're not quite working well enough to tackle these other challenges, um, I think that it's basically up to individuals and groups to try and avert these kinds of problems. Um, you and the people you know that can take some action to prevent these kinds of problems should do so. So if you have good ideas about how to avert um, climate problems, you should go and work on that. You should work on those projects. You should um, uh, solve those, those issues. They're not going to be solved on their own. And so it really those problems depend on you individually to go and solve them. Um, if you're worried about the computing phase transition, if you're worried about what BCI is going to turn out to be, what AGI is going to turn out to be, go work on those problems, because those are really critical to get right. And for the Falcon community, our job is to figure out that the computing infrastructure gets dramatically better that the computing infrastructure gets to preserve human rights, and that we can bake in a much more robust foundation into the strata of the internet. If we can do that well, that'll, that'll be a much better foundation to build all these other things on. And remember that everything related to computing, it all comes back to data. Code is data. All kinds of programs and systems are just the ap applications and functions over data. So by building a very good storage network, by building a very good data system, by building a network storage structure that, pr that protects human rights, we can greatly improve the conditions of the world. Uh, added bonus, if we can cre uh, create projects like Falcon Green, that then, in the, in the meantime, are putting a huge dent into, um, into the climate problem and showing how you can use um, incentive systems to uh, make an impact. Great, so the good news of all this, so you know, big challenge, intense. The good news is that we have extremely powerful tools. Um, today, we, we have mechanism design eaten by software. So we have the massive scale computing platform, we have software systems, and we get to program incentive structures and deploy them into the world and have massive outcome, outcomes. Um, I talked a lot, lot more about this in a talk recently. Here's the, the QR code. Um, uh, I think like, I feel about the mechanism design um, meets uh, software, the, the way that I sort of felt about like crypto in the early days. Um, I think if we can use these systems to solve planetary scale problems, we'll be in great shape. And, and the good news is you can have massive scale action without, um, by just kind of coordinating people through, coordinating people and groups through blockchains. Um, so breaking down um, the crypto space, what lies at the core of blockchains it's just a very general way of deploying a mechanism through the software computing infrastructure to align people towards, um, towards better outcomes, towards more positive sum outcomes. And so it really is about software eating mechanism design and reshaping incentives, mechanisms, and so on, software eating law, software eating money, software eating organizations, and so on. Um, but this is you know, very di fundamentally different than what happened in Web 1 and Web 2. This is rebasing the um, the ways in which we coordinate on better primitives, on things that are verifiable, on things where you can count on cryptographic proofs that something is happening or not happening, not just relying on trusts or promises from corporations or um, promises that might be overturned at some point. Um, just to give you a sense of the 
ridiculous power that these kinds of incentive structures have, just remember that Bitcoin is just a currency on top of a single mechanism. There's an auction, an ongoing auction, that is releasing a certain amount of currency proportional to the amount of power you put in. And that, that single mechanism deployed out into the world has caused the, one of the largest and single systems that are, that, that are consuming energy. Um, the, this is like a very old graph. This is a, like an old uh, comparison. And even then, it was already um, consuming much more energy than many nation states around the world. Um, and we have a taste of that power. Um, in, we built Falcon with knowing the, the, the level of capability that, you, that these mechanisms give. And we've seen, in a, in a very short time, um, getting to a massive scale of capacity um, by deploying those, um, those mechanisms into the wild. So you can, if you can frame a problem, if you can take a large scale planetary problem, break it down into some optimization surface, and you can create a mechanism to shift people from where we are now in whatever equilibrium to that equilibrium, um, you can use blockchains to scale that action uh, globally extremely quickly. This kind of change has happened in two years, which is mind blowing. Um, so with that, I want to bring you to the mission of Filecoin, which is to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. Uh, the decentral each one of these words is colored because it means a lot of things. Um, the decentralized part is about making sure that these systems are not controlled by any one central party, that they are, um, that they are open and permissionless, that many groups together, that, are, that they are pluralistic, that many groups are coming together to agree on, um, on the system. Uh, we want to make sure that it's efficient, that it is a good solution, that it uh, is cost effective, that it's fast, that it's um, uh, robust, and so on. Um, we want to make sure that th this network can properly compete with all the centralized uh, parties. <clears throat> so the, the efficient word um, really means that as a target for us, we want Filecoin to be the best storage network, period. Not just the best decentralized storage network, the best storage network on the planet. Uh, now, we have a lot of work to do to get there. Um, but already today, we're like, infinitely better than we were like, two years ago, because we launched the network. Um, and also dramatically better than we were um, a year ago. All kinds of improvements have arrived. So we're on the path to, to build a, a, an efficient network. Uh, we also need to make sure that it's robust. So this means that it's capable of withstanding massive shocks to the system, and that it creates a, a, an environment that can deal with all kinds of problems. And so this means that the network needs to be able to respond to challenges, some of them knowable and some of them unknowable. So we need to have a stance as a community of problem solving, not just problem avoidance. Um, not only we, we can, of course, design all kinds of structures to solve problems that we can foresee, but perhaps more important is that we as a community um, are extremely resilient and able to respond to challenges as they emerge and are able to reshape um, how we do things to deal with those problems. Uh, this robustness principle is one of the, the key things that I think will um, make Filecoin a dramatically better platform than the centralized cloud systems of today. Um, that robustness and capability of uh, withstanding massive shocks and changes um, is really key. And we've seen um, already the robustness tested over the last year. Massive shifts and policy changes worldwide have uh, caused changes in the crypto world. Um, and the Falcon network keeps growing. And the Falcon network didn't lose um, uh, data. It, it lost some data and it recovered it, right? It lost some storage. That it, um, and we recovered all of that and kept growing. So that's a, a good example of um, that robustness. That is a key advantage that can make Falcon a much better uh, foundation. So this word foundation, it, the key thing here is that it, we're not building a product, just a product or a service. We're building what is meant to be a solid and strong foundation for a digital civilization. So when you think about a city, when you think about the infrastructure that a city requires, um, it, humans, lives, and organizations over long periods of time require stable systems that are not going to change on, under them, where they know the structures they, they can build for the future, knowing that that foundation is stable. Uh, think, I kind of think of the current cloud world as quicksand. Um, things are good insofar the policy changes um, by one small group um, are in line with, with your goals. Uh, but at any point, those kinds of things can change. Think of how many uh, applications and systems are gone from the internet today. Uh, so many systems have disappeared in a you know, very short time span uh, because a gr uh, some group decided that that was not quite in line with like, the, the business model or something like that. Uh, so you want, you want to be able to 
as humanity moves much more into the di digital realm, we want to make sure that we're building our digital civilization on a very strong foundation. And therefore, we should aim Filecoin to be that strong foundation. We should make sure that as we're building applications and services and systems, we're making them to be long-lasting, we're making them to be decentralized, we're making them to, be, uh, to, have, to establish strong SLAs for many years in the future, ideally decades, um, and to give uh, the users always the option to exit, always the option to uh, shift structure, um, and users should never feel um, deplatformed by, by, um, by the Filecoin network. Uh, I think this is going to become even more important in the decades ahead as geopolitical shifts start happening um, or more geopolitical shifts happen. The foundations of the internet are going to be tested and we'll find that many systems, many networks and so on will quickly readapt and shift and change. Um, and at that point, it will have been critical to have, be able to rely on a strong foundation that preserves human rights, that makes sure um, to establish a good uh, structure to build applications. Uh, and finally, when we're thinking about humanity's information, uh, just really think of your daily life, everything that you do, all of your personal data, all of your personal messages, all of your work data and, and work, data, um, work messages, all of the things that you've written. All, increasingly, most of what we do is becoming digital artifacts. Um, and so the, the, the wealth of our information um, comes in many different forms, in many different use cases. And we want to tune Filecoin to be able to cover all of that. Now, when you're building a product, you, you don't want to build a product for everything because that's really hard. So what, what you, the way that we should be thinking about Filecoin is that it's a very strong foundation upon which product, uh, vertical-specific products can be built um, that tune for those use cases. But really think of, of, in the long term, everything that can be addressed digitally um, can find a good home in the Filecoin network. So I think that you know, if we can do this well, um, if we can sort of go through these principles and achieve that kind of a network, um, we can be in a, in a really good place um, civilizationally to make sure that we have a robust platform uh, for the future. Uh, and just remember that like, while all of these, each of these things is hard, um, you can start somewhere. And it's much more important to have a good improvement rate than be in a good position at any one moment. So I strongly encourage all groups to, instead of working towards a um, you know, really perfect system before shipping or something like that, just get to improving the condition um, incrementally and get to improving that condition over time and measure the growth rate. The growth rate matters way more than where you are at any given moment. Uh, great, so I spent the bulk of the time on this part. Um, the, I wanna do like a quick recognition and then I wanna leave you with a challenge. So the, the network has grown tremendously already. Uh, it is an amazing testament to everyone's work uh, across the world that you know, today we're in, like, on this amazingly fast-growing fast network. Um, and we've gone from, and you can follow all the news and so on, and many other talks um, around have given you a preview of, of what's going on. Uh, another Molly gave a really um, uh, comprehensive talk of, of all the roadmap and progress. Uh, you can follow uh, updates from in the Falcon blog and the Falcon Foundation's blog. Um, there's so much amazing stuff happening. Um, I'll quickly like glance through a few slides, so I'm not gonna speak to them because that will take way too long. Um, so I'll glance through a few slides to just give you a feel for the kind of accomplishments that have happened uh, across our community. By the way, this is really cool. I can't help myself. <laughs> this is like really epic level of uh, storage. Uh, last week, I was, we were like at about 80 or something. Two, two weeks ago, we were about 80. And every time I have to like get a new graph because it's already out of date, so it's really awesome. Um, Great, so there's a lot there. Um, uh, congratulations. This was, this was the impact of all our community together, so really thank you for all of the work that you do in every corner of the ecosystem, 
Uh, this community is one of the most exciting communities on the planet, and it is all thanks to you. So really thank you for an amazing, incredible um, few, last few years and amazing trajectory that we have. Um, so I want to leave you with a challenge. The, the thing I want us to focus on in this time period, given the macro, uh, the, the global scale macro downturn and so on, is that this moment, the next two quarters, and perhaps the two quarters after that, are a great time to build and grow. So what I want you to think about is, think about one of these areas that you have a special affinity for, uh, or that you're working on in general, and think of how to grow that area. So growth here, think of primarily um, other people, other organizations, and so on, or taking some state of something and increasing it. So for example, uh, storage capacity, we're growing that, but let's grow that more. Um, the onboarding rate, let's, let's figure out where it is, and let's increase and accelerate the growth rate. Um, Retrieval networks, they don't exist yet. Like they're, they're being developed. Let's build those and deploy those. Computation, let's ship the FAM. Let's um, get to computation over data and so on. Uh, think of expanding capabilities and, so, and whatnot. Um, think of people here building products. Think about helping them. Think about growing, helping them grow their products. Uh, think about holes in the ecosystem, problems that exist that could be turned into services or businesses, and go do that. Or talk to somebody about going to do that and building it. Um, help the many startups that are building on our network. Help run more experiments. Help coordinate through DAOs, like experiment with beyond. Um, the Paco Network has a ton of companies and organizations, which is really awesome, uh, but we're kind of like punching below our weight in the term of DAOs, so it would be really cool to have a lot of DAOs in the future. Uh, think of communities around the world. Think of growing, um, growing those. Think of um, doing more things in different geographies. Think of more events. Um, think of building bridges to other networks. This could be other blockchain networks. This could be um, other community internet networks. So things like universities or research groups or um, ecosystems, industry ecosystems or something like that. Um, and then really think of bringing more people into the ecosystem. Think of teams that you think are amazing and awesome. Um, and think of bringing them closer to the Paco network. Um, think of helping start new organizations. Think of bringing other organizations into our ecosystem. And think of being able to give people jobs. In this particular moment in the downturn, there will be a lot of companies that freeze hiring, a lot of companies that have to, to grow more slowly, and a lot of companies that go under. And at that point, it'll be really useful if our network can be a great home for a lot of the people that are um, looking to change, change um, careers or are onto the next thing. So really think of like, your organization and being able to, in this moment when so many other groups, especially the large uh, cloud systems, are all kind of freezing hiring, in this moment is a great moment for us to hire, um, uh, hire a lot more and offer jobs to a lot of those people, and that way grow, um, grow the network. Uh, and also think of the storage um, providers and the retrieval providers and so on as also creating jobs in our network. Think, think of, we should start measuring the number of people working in storage provider systems and retrieval provider systems and so on, and measure those as jobs that the Falcon network has created. Um, it'd be great to see that graph, um, and it'd be great to see that graph with a growth rate. Um, think of offering more grants, think of offering more investments, and think of just supporting um, each other more. So remember that right now we're like in an expansion phase for the network. This is still like very early days. Um, there's a lot more um, growth uh, in the long term. So let's really focus on that, on that, on the, the growth rates more than the absolute numbers. Uh, think of all the different economy participants, think of each of those areas and think of um, helping each of those grow. And so what I kind of want to ask you to do is that in the next six months, in the next two quarters, you individually add one person or one team or one organization per month. So that's not a huge ask, right? Like, just if in one month, uh, if you want to focus on developers, that just means help bring six developers to the Falcon ecosystem. Or if you want to think about events and you're working on events, then work on six new events, one per month. Or you could do a combination of these. Um, but I want, like my ask to you as community members is that you individually, as a single person, bring six new people, teams, orgs, partnerships, whatever, to the network. Just one per month is not hard, right? We can all do that. Uh, just talking to people about one per month is like totally achievable. Uh, so let's set that as a goal and see where we are in six months. Thank you very much for having me. It is a true, truly an honor and a pleasure to be here. And thank you for being part of the network.